Right, hello again. On to, I don't even know what number we're on now. Hang on. Where are we? Oh, this bloody chair. No, I haven't written down what number we're on. I can't remember, 220 something, I think. And you might have heard of this one. I had Bells a couple of nights ago, which is the biggest selling uh, blended whiskey in the UK. Now this one is actually the biggest selling whiskey, blended whiskey in Scotland, but it's the second biggest selling whiskey in the UK. And it is of course, Famous Grouse. Um, now, Famous Grouse, you would have thought would be very, very easy for me to get a hold of, but this one was actually donated in amongst that huge collection from Mr. X. Um, and it looks to be a pretty recent bottling of it as well. So Mr. X, thank you very much. Um, I thought this would be easily that I could just pick this up absolutely anywhere, but amazing, it's amazing how many people just don't have Grouse and Bells, almost because they're whiskey drinkers. Um, I probably could have knocked a few doors down the street and been able to find some, but um, very, very few people um, that I've, I've known that are whiskey drinkers have any of this in their collection. So Famous Grouse, massively popular, um, was produced, um, first produced by Matthew Gloag and Sons, G-L-O-A-G, Gloag, so I'm pronouncing it Gloag, I don't think it's Gloag, um, in 1896, um, Matthew Gloag and Sons were a um, grocer uh, who were based in Perth, um, and they were a, a grocer and a wine merchant, and they were actually asked to um, produce, uh, they were asked to supply the wines and spirits for a um, royal banquet for Queen Victoria. And um, obviously, you know, you want the absolute best. So they ended up creating a whiskey specifically for this banquet. And it was called at the time, The Grouse. Proved to be very popular, was very highly regarded, and was sold to uh, to their clientele for, you know, this is what was drunk by the Queen, Queen Victoria, this is what was served at the Royal Banquet. Um, became known as Famous Grouse in 1905 because the grouse had become famous. Um, it's the uh, Scotland's national game bird, so that was why it was named that. Um, you know, very big in the area, um, grouse shooting, all this lot. Were they shooting at that time? Yeah, they had guns, didn't they? <laughs> What am I on about? Um, so yeah, so it was um, very, very popular and has remained popular through the years. Now, um, the Grouse brand was actually owned by um, the Gloag family until 1970. It remained family owned and, and fairly independent until 1970 um, when uh, one of the family died and it was acquired by a company called Highland Distillers who ultimately became part of the Edrington Group um, in 1999 and it remains part of the Edrington group now who also own uh, well Glen Turret is um, the the famous grouse experience so Glen Turret single malt distillery but famous grouse was such a big brand but obviously being a blended whiskey doesn't have like a home as such so Glen Turret was chosen as the home of the famous grouse so Glen Turret is less a single malt distillery called Glen Turret and more the famous grouse experience um, a large part of this, or sorry, a large part of this, a key constituent of this is Highland Park, McAllen, and Glenrothes, and probably safe to say Glen Turret as well. Now it's 35% malt, um, so it's not one of the highest percentages of malt, but it's you know it's not too bad to be perfectly honest. In terms of where the grain comes from, don't know, not sure, couldn't really find out. Um, I wouldn't even like to guess, to be perfectly honest, possibly Gervin, but um, I wouldn't like to say. Um, and apart from that, to be honest, even though Famous Grouse is the second biggest blended whiskey, that's about it information-wise, to be perfectly honest. Um, there wasn't really anything else that stood out or that was any different to what I was reading in other sites. You're looking at, well, it's a bit like, it's, it's there with Bells and Teachers and everything like that. So Tesco at the moment are selling this for 14 quid. They were selling Bells for 14 quid, which was also part of their two for 20 quid. So this will be two for 20 quid at some point. It will be 12 quid, it will be 10 pound, it will be 12 pound a litre at Christmas. This does the bulk of its um, sales at Christmas. Bells seems to be more through the year with a big boost at Christmas. Grouse seems to be more at Christmas than anything else. <clears throat> Unlike Bells, Grouse have also started moving into different um, versions of Grouse as well. So there was a Black Grouse, which was a um, like a peated version, smoky version of Grouse. Um, there was the Snow Grouse, which was meant to be served chilled, um, which I'm sure went down really well with um, proper hardcore whiskey drinkers. 
Um, there's a couple of others. There's a Grouse Mellow Gold. Now, Mellow Gold, I'm, I thought was a brand of coffee, um, but this seems to be a softer version of Famous Grouse. So, forty <clears throat> percent. You know, nothing. There's no. Oh, that's interesting. This one is actually from. Oh no, maybe not. It's got all sorts of stuff on the back label. I thought it was from Italy, but then there's Greek and German and French. So it must just be the nature of this miniature. It does say Mit Farbstoff on it, which if you weren't aware, um, is a requirement in Germany where for co uh, uh, coloring, E150A as it's known as, um, if coloring is added to a whiskey in Germany, it is a legal requirement for you to put that on the packaging. So Mit Farbstoff, is because um, it actually says Zucker Zucker um, is basically it's got coloring added to it. So this has had coloring added to it, and it's still it's not the darkest in the world. It's got to be said it's a decent color, but it's not quite as amber as say the dimple was last night. I wonder if you'd actually be able to pick up the two because dimple was the fifth. Oh no, you won't because of the. I don't think you'll be able to pick up the difference in colour between the two, but the dimple certainly has a more amber colour, whereas this is a little bit more yellowy. It's not quite urine though, so don't worry about that. So again, grouse. Have I drunk grouse? If I have, it was years ago. Cannot remember what it's like because of my inherent snobbiness being a whiskey drinker. But this is, this is part of the reason for doing the challenge, is to come across all these whiskies that I wouldn't touch with a barge pole ordinarily because I am a whiskey snob. So let's actually see what they're like. Let's give them a go. Try and look at them objectively um, and try and let them stand on their own two feet. Now on the nose, there is bugger all, to be honest. What I should do what I should do. No, I'm not going to. I was going to say, what I should do really is actually do a direct comparison with Bells, but I don't think that's fair. And I, I, I need this to stand on its own, own two feet. There's not a great deal on the nose. There isn't. There's a very distant maltiness to it. There's not even much of a grainy character to it. Not much of a of an edginess, not, you know, a sharpness or a like metallic edge that I sometimes get with grain. There's not a huge amount. It's really difficult to pick up anything kind of individual. There's a slight sugariness to it, maybe? Almost like a candy floss. really really difficult to pick up anything distinctive it's very very neutral almost like neutral spirit yeah very very little on that very little indeed you know everything that's there everything you can say well maybe toffee maybe sherbet maybe malt is so far off in the distance and it's just so weak that it's just kind of like almost nothing But you know what, on the palate, bugger me if it isn't all right. It's, it's weird. There's, it's quite a sweet character to it. There's a sweet fudge feel to it. There's quite a nice malt character to it. There's almost a bit of like milk chocolate in there as well. Tell you what I get as well, is sugared almonds. Yeah. Sugared almonds, very much so. Do you know what? <laughs> this is actually pretty good. Not getting much on the nose. It's it's almost like a very generic whiskey character, a very neutral, almost like what somebody that doesn't really drink whiskey thinks whiskey should smell like. This is what it smells like. It's so neutral and dull and not a lot to it at all. But I 
There's a nice mouthfeel to it. Slightly too much grain on that. The first couple of mouthfuls did actually work quite well. Bit more sharpness kicked in, a bit more harshness. Might have just been the way that I swallowed it and rolled it around my mouth. It just sort of prickled a little bit too much. But there is a definite sugared almonds character to it. It's very soft, sweet nuttiness. And there is that, that sugar coating that you get on sugared almonds that's very soft. It's a soft sweetness. Shit, this is actually quite good. This, this I do actually rate this better than Bell's. I'm not going to buy a bottle of it. It's not knocking my socks off. It's not blowing me away with its depth and its quality, but for something that for years I have completely dismissed as something crap, you know, just gone. It's cheap, everybody buys it, everybody gets it for Christmas, it's always on deal, it sells by the bucket loads, it's gonna be crap. And it's not, it's actually pretty decent. I would not turn it down. I think I was the same with Bells, where if somebody gave me a, a glass of it, or if it was the only thing in a bar, I would have no issues drinking it. If there was other things to choose, I would choose something else. But if somebody turned, turned around to me and said, I've, I've got a glass of famous grouse, you know, do you want a glass of whiskey? That, that's all they've got. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, fine. And if there was a bottle of Bells and a bottle of grouse behind the bar and nothing else, I would go with the grouse. Yeah. It's not that bad. And that sugared almond character, I like sugared almonds a lot, a lot. And because I'm picking that up, that's what I'm going with. And I think that's why I'm enjoying it. I think I'm actually focusing on the sugared almonds character and actually dismissing probably any other faults with it. There's not a lot to fault with it because there's not really a lot else. It's not rough. There's a little bit of harshness. But there's not really anything else in there. The overriding character is sugared almonds to me, personally. That's all I can pick up and nothing else. And it might be that somebody doesn't pick up the sugared almonds character and just gets nothing else because there isn't a great deal to it. I can't fault it. I can't fault it. I can't massively praise it but there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And actually it's pretty pleasant to drink. Well, there you go. Shouldn't be so judgmental, should I? Very, very interesting indeed. Uh, Mr. X, thank you very much for that because that was actually surprisingly good. So if you do get offered a famous grouse or if somebody buys you a present because they don't know you that well, but they know you like whiskey and you end up getting a gift pack with famous grouse in it, don't throw it away. Give it a go, try it first, see what you think. You might be surprised because I certainly am. Right, that's me done. I shall see you in the next one. Cheers.